We're going to be installing this DMR mobile radio into my car today on KF5 IRA Ham Radio. So I've been using this Radio Oddity DB25V mobile radio in my Ford Escape for about the past two years or so, but I've never really done a permanent installation for power to this radio. For about the past two years or so that I've owned this radio and been using it in my car, I've been using this 12 volt cigarette lighter to T-post connector style cable to power the radio. But I'm finally getting annoyed by every time I shut the car off and restart the car or auto start gets left on and the engine restarts at like a red light or something like that, the radio reboots because the cigarette lighter turns off briefly and then turns right back on. So I'm finally going to do a permanent power installation for this radio. So there are a couple of things that you are going to need to buy before you install your radio into your car. And it's gonna be of course the wiring harness or the wiring that you're going to need for your radio. In this case, again, my particular radio is using this T-style connector like you see here. I picked this particular one up at Ham Radio Outlet. I think you can pick just about all of the ones that you might need up on Amazon as well, but just keep in mind that you need to make sure that you are picking up the correct one for the radio that you are trying to install. And then second, you're just gonna need some ring terminals. That's what's gonna make connecting the wires to the battery a little bit easier. The antenna that I'm running on my car is the Diamond NR73B. NMO style mount antenna. And then the mount that I'm using is this K400 lip mount that I am just have lip mounted to the trunk lid of my car. And then on the inside of the car, I just pulled the paneling back and just kind of ran the wires through, ran it underneath the carpet just to make it a much cleaner install. So now with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started installing. So the first thing that you are going to need to do is you're going to need to pull up the carpet or find your firewall access. You can probably just Google this for whatever model your car is and that will make it much easier for your install process. In Ford Escapes like mine, it is kind of underneath the driver's side dash and next to the steering shaft. And the firewall pass-through is actually gonna be that rubber grommet right there. So I've now got the firewall pass-through cap out and you can see that I now have access to the firewall. So let's go ahead and pop up the hood and then you should be able to see the firewall pass-through a little bit easier. All right, so I finally got the wiring installed. You can see that I have the DB25D connected to the battery terminals. And I also have just gone ahead and run the wiring for my FT891. So when I'm ready to install that, I'll be good to go on that front. But got all that done. I chose not to show me doing the installation and running the wires just because it took forever to run the wiring. And honestly, I kind of forgot just trying to get all that done. So I did not show that part. But so you can see here in the interior, I actually ran the wires, uh, like I said, through the pass through over there. And then I just kind of tucked them in safely underneath the carpet and then pushed them through some of the trim over there. And I'll show you the other side. So as you can see, I've now got the cabling nice and dressed in there, kind of tucked. Uh, up underneath of all this paneling and everything so it's nice and clean. Cleanly run, looks a little bit more professional. And then I've also just come and I've zip tied everything to the Lido mount and power is now run to the radio. Then I've also got the PL259 running into the back of the radio as well. And as you can see here, the radio is now powered on from the battery without the engine having to run. All right, so I didn't really show a whole lot of the install process. It got dark really fast and it lasted a lot longer than I thought and none of my cameras had any batteries that would actually last. So I didn't really show a whole lot of the install process, but I just kind of really wanted to show you guys my setup here, mobile and my car. Like I said, I'm running the diamond antenna and then I'm also running the Radio Oddity DB25D. This is my primary mobile setup. And also I just went ahead and pulled the wiring for power for my Yesu 891 because I do plan to install it here at some point in the near future so that I can run HF in my car mobiles, but that will be a separate video down the road. But one more thing that I will say is I would highly recommend if you're planning on running two meter 440 and HF, I would just go ahead and run all the wiring at the same time, whether that be your antenna wire at the same time, your coax if you have it already, 
or your power at the same time. That way you don't have to go and tear everything back up. Everything's ripped apart only once and really all you gotta do is plug and play. I haven't yet connected the power leads to the battery yet for the 891. I'll do that at a later date, but the wiring is run and all I have to do is connect the power leads to the battery and then just go and connect the power to the radio. That way I don't have to worry about any loose connections shorting out or anything like that or draining the battery as well. And this is something I probably should have done about two years ago when I got the radio, but just been kind of too lazy to do it. But it's finally installed properly. No more 12 volt cigarette lighter plug. I now have that free for whatever I want to do, uh, whether it be for storm chasing or whatever. If I want to run another temporary setup or something like that in the car, I can now do that since I have that cigarette lighter plug free. So. All the wiring is run, everything's set up now. I'm a happy camper. Hopefully you guys see how just kind of how easy it was to do. It took a little bit of time to wire it up, mainly because I had to take a lot of things apart on this particular car. But make sure that when you go to do your install, you're buying the proper connections for your radio. Make sure you do the research for the power leads. Most of the radios that you'll buy these days will have all that included uh, when they come from the factory. But if you're buying them used, just keep in mind, some of them may not come with the harnesses, so you may need to buy that from somewhere like Ham Radio Outlet or Amazon. But I think that's pretty much it for now. Like I said, I just wanted to show you guys my setup. This is my Radio Oddity DB25D. Finally got it installed properly in the car. All the wiring is run nice and cleanly. And I highly recommend taking the time to make sure that you're just wiring everything up cleanly. Just make it look good. It's a couple more extra minutes to do it. I try to make my wiring clean. That way passengers that ride in my car aren't getting caught up on the wires and stuff like that, ripping them out whatever and it just looks better i just like to have a little bit of pride in the work that i do in terms of installing radios in my car so i think that'll do it for today thank you guys so much for watching if you were interested in helping to support the channel the two biggest things you can do is make sure to hit that like button hit that subscribe button those are the two biggest things that help support this channel until next time guys thank you so much for watching 73